greet you in that wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ. Welcome you all to our morning worship service here at Daviri. And I wish if the saints of God can make some noise. If you are alive, shout hallelujah. If you are glad to be here, you can make some noise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, just quoting from this song uh, by Don Moen. It says here, thank you, Lord. As we gather in this place today, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. We come before you today, and there's just one thing that we want to say. Thank you, Lord. For all you have given us, for all the blessings we cannot see, thank you, Lord. With grateful hearts, with songs of praise, with outstretched arms, we bless your name. We just want to say thank you, Lord. For all you have done in our lives, you took our darkness and gave us light. Thank you, Lord. You took our sins and our shame. You took our sicknesses and healed our pains. Thank you, Lord. There is someone or somebody or anybody or everybody that is in this house today just need to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So as we begin today with a word of prayer, and then we will hand over to our worshipers. Father, we are thankful. And as I always say, it's not that we are better than anybody, but because of your grace this morning, because of your love towards us. God, we thank you that we, our bed did not become our cooling board. We thank you, God, that we are alive and we are here with, oh God, arms and legs and mouth and everything intact. And though some might be suffering and some might be going through the process of pain and distress, we are still alive and well. And we are saying this morning, thank you. Thank you, God, for Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you for the people that have come together in this house. They're just to lift hands, just to stamp feet, just to make noise, just to play the instrument, just to shout unto God, to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wish I had a witness here in this house. I wish I had a witness here in this house. I wish I had a witness. Oh God, we thank you. We bless your name. For if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would not even be standing here today. So God, the pandemic is here. We don't know when it's going to go. Church has opened back for one hour. But in all this, we are saying, God, thank you. We bless your name because you are in control. You are in charge. So take charge this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Come on, worshipers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth this morning, Jesus? Your beauty is matchless, Lord. And you being in your presence is heaven to me this morning, Jesus. And I'm grateful that I could stand here with all my sisters and brothers in Christ that we could worship and praise God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and less Nothing in this world can satisfy. For Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Is your presence, Lord? Your presence is heaven to me. Is your presence is heaven to me, Lord? Yeah. 
midst, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are here in our midst right now, moving and working hallelujah. in our midst, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So we worship you this hallelujah. morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving up in our midst. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Because you are my way maker. Hey, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Because you are here touching every heart. You are here touching every I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here healing every heart. You are here healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here turning lives around. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here mending every heart. You are here mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Because you are my way maker. Way, way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are my way maker, say, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are my way maker, Lord. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness.
somebody just clap your hands wherever you are this day. Just make some noise in the house of the Lord. If God has been good to you, I say if God has been good to you, if God has been good to you, if God has been good to you, hallelujah, hallelujah, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We the church in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming king. Um, bring greetings. Uh, we are here at Darby Tabernacle one more time. And those viewing over the internet, we greet you and we thank you for taking time to pay attention this day. We go straight into the reading of God's word this day as you remain standing uh, from the Psalms. Psalms number 13. One tree. Psalms number 13. One tree. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? Having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten or enlighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I prevail against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But, somebody shout, but. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he had dealt bountifully with me. Bless your words and the hear of us your word in Jesus' name. Let's all shout amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. As I posted on the chat this morning, our church that God for the grown-ups. If you ever if you saw that with an exclamation mark, God for the grown-ups. This psalm that is some say or most say it is written by David, and some say it's by Asaph, who oh, chief musician, but as you have your superscription here, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. And to this psalm, together with our other psalms that are recorded, is really for mature people. So this, you know, when you watch the television or you look at the ratings, as they call them, but Deacon, you see, it's for 13 and up, and 16 or 18 and up. This psalm is for the adults. This is another PG. No way PG, it's for the adults. In other words, it's for the mature in Christ. You know, we growing up in church and custom with cliches, uh, uh, that we hear growing up and we hear that song that says like a bridge over troubled waters we hear parts of the scripture that says he's a lily of the valley rose chiron hallelujah he has read or sing songs and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the voice I hear falling on my hair is no other. Hallelujah. We grow up in church and we, we hear certain things. I am blessed and highly favored. I am a child of God and all these things. When you read Psalms number 13, 
You see that word? If you're following your Bible, how long? Four times the rights of the psalm. Thank you. Is asking how long? How long? How long? And as we go into this this morning, I just want you to follow on. Have you ever been in a how long situation? How long, oh God? Did this sickness remain with me? How long do I have to go through the stress and the trials that I'm going through? How long, how long, oh God, oh, that ungrateful neighbor has to get up every day and watch me in my face and stoops? How long do I have to go to work and meet that ungrateful boss? How long do I have to work and be under pain? Because the, 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 the salary is just not enough. Uh, it's under my grade. How long do I have to face those co-workers when they see me? They start gossiping about me. How long do I have to remain in this family? Because this family is sending me straight to hell. How long do I have to deal with this husband? How long do I have to deal with this wife? How long, God, do I have to deal with these children? How long? How long, God? It's a question. Now I need you to take. I know some of you, and I said it last week, spiritually minded and, and all that is going well. And you're saved and sanctified on your way to heaven. I thank God for you. And nothing bothers you. Nothing seems to to move you uh, any way or any way possible, God bless you. But I'm speaking to the saints of God who are going through or who have been through and who continues to go through some how long periods in their life. If there are anybody like this, if there are anyone like this in this house who are asking and saying, how long you can make some noise this morning. Hallelujah. How long? Thomas, David is facing a time of his life. Can I just point this out to you? That David is known as a man after God's own heart. David is a man who faced giants and called on his God. And his God delivered him. David is a man when while he was yet a boy, God saw a king. Hallelujah. And anointed him as king. So this is not no Johnny come lately. This is not no person that has just entered in and now asking how long. This is someone who have been tried, been tested, have gone through the ranks, have been there for a very long time, and have seen what has happened, and looking all around, and now he's in a predicament. He feels like if God has forgotten him. He feels abandoned. He feels uh, that he's left all alone to face uh, the trials that are in his way. And he's asking, how long, oh God? And if he's forgotten, have you ever in your life, and if you live long enough, you will experience a time like that, that you feel forgotten. I tell people, if you're sick, people will call you. How are you going? But be sick for a very long time. Then you'll realize the call stopped. Then you'll realize you're all alone on that bed. And you feel in your spirit like they forget me, boy. Oh God, like, like nobody calls again. Nobody is interested in me again. Because the reality of life, that life goes on. And whether you choose to whine and pout or to give God the glory, life continues on. In this pandemic, life has been moving on. They say it's a new normal. Hallelujah. And we are coping, we are adapting. We are changing our ways and our approach. We can't hug anybody. We can't lay hands on anybody. We can't visit and lime and have a good time. 
people have said they miss the river, they, they miss hearing, oh God, look for this one and look out for this one. They, they miss the smell of going to the river and smelling curry. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Thank God for that one. Amen. They miss the, 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 the coming together. And we don't know how long, how long the pandemic may last. But it's not, it's here. We don't know how long, but we know who's in control. We know what we are about. We are the light of the world. A light that is set on top. It cannot be hid. And I admonish you and I encourage you. Let your light shine. How long? Have you forgotten me, God? Hey, 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 help me preach this one. He says, How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? This is some serious question. There's some. Uh, uh, you see, when we have problems, we can go to God. When we have issues, we go to God. When people are harassing us or things are not working out we go to God but when God becomes a problem who do we go to can I get an amen when, when we start God where are you in all this how, how long do I deal with this cancer how long do I deal with this heart problem how long do I deal with that ungrateful person how long oh God do I deal with that, that pastor how long have you ever felt forgotten in your life? Have you ever felt like the world is upon your shoulders and the weight of uh, 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 pressure and pain and distress and being uh, you are in discomfort because everything that you're walking and facing, it seems like a brick wall is in front of you. You turn to the left, there's a brick wall. You turn to the right, there's another wall. You turn to the front, there's another wall. You turn to the back, it seems like you're surrounded. You're encompassed with enemy and frustration and bitterness and hurt and pain. And everywhere that you turn, you cannot see God in all this. But the psalmist uh, is going through some stress. Uh, so he's feeling abandoned. Uh, he's feeling uh, neglected. He's dejected. And then he goes and he starts talking to himself. He says, it's not bad talking to yourself. And some, I wonder they're putting this bad. It's how you answer back yourself. He said, I take counsel. Mm-hmm. In my soul, in our words, start scratching his head, start wondering. Well, I went and I can't see God. My enemy is right around me, and it seems that they go put me to death because the problem that I'm facing it go take my life. Oh God! But 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 I start talking to myself because if you're mature, if you're adult enough, you know when I was growing up. I, I used to look at my father just talking to himself. And I used to say, yeah, it's, it's going, he's going mad. But at this brighter age, at the 40s, and I have some children, hallelujah, and I have families, I find myself talking to myself. Have you ever spoken to yourself? Have you ever asked yourself, Lord, what's going on? How did I end up here? What on earth is happening? Where the money gone? When you meet the end of the month and you have to say any, mini, miny, mo, which bill should I pay? Because you don't have enough money. When you open to look and then you start seeing more cupboard than groceries. When you open the refrigerator and you hear or you see things that were there the last couple of time and sh shrivel and you're saying, God, where, oh, how, or oh, what I'm going to do. Have you ever been there? And I just want to talk about long time growing up. My sister and I and others were last night talking about growing up, borrowing the neighbor for a cup to make a cook on a Sunday and rice and dal. And curry mango was the meal on a Sunday. Um, 
I, I, and we did not really fuss if there was chicken or not. Because the few times that you got chicken, you say, thank God. The days that you didn't get, it didn't bother you. Because the neighbor chicken did not step across the boundary. Praise the name of the Lord. Am I speaking to anybody here? Yeah. Uh, you, 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 immature. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. But you new age saints would not understand fully or comprehend like my children and others will understand what I'm talking about. But the, the, the older ones, uh, should I say older? Oh, sorry, not older. I know you're not old. The mature ones, uh, the ones who have aged like good fine wine will understand what I'm talking about. When the bay and the... What, 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 and, uh, 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 and the others... Yes, walks out and you had to carry on by yourself and you were looking light in his face and say, how on earth do I do this? How on earth do I raise these children? How on earth do I give them my education? How on earth do I make ends meet? How long? Am I speaking here to anybody? Hallelujah. So I start speaking to myself and the sorrow in my heart daily. Oh God, you see, what we perceive is a lot. You know how we see things. How we look at things. Because you can look at things and tell yourself. It's all bad. It ain't worth it. God. It seems like I was dead today. And there are others who will look at it. And say. You know what. This is the day. That the Lord has made. And I still have breath. And I'm breathing the God's breath and I'm moving and I still have my limbs and I still get something to eat and I still have water and I still have a roof over my head. God, I thank you. Some will look at it and say, oh boy, the other day when the breeze was blowing hard and it sounded like hurricane, I guess everybody got up who knew Christ and who did not know Christ got up and said, Lord God, have mercy. Hold my roof down. Let everything stay in place. Because I was praying. I was praying hard. My roof was getting up and going down. And I was watching and I saw by my brother's room the galvanized rays up and I was seeing skylight and I was seeing rain and I said, God, I don't want to lose the roof right now. God, hallelujah. Start speaking to himself. Let's follow with me as a the Lord, hallelujah. Consider and hear me, verse 3. Oh Lord, my God, like my eyes. At least I sleep the sleep of death. You know, this yesterday I was talking to, about my mother who was diagnosed with cancer at a far gone stage in her life. And I was there with her. And I heard her cry out to God and said to God, God, like you hate me, you don't love me, you don't care about me, why you have me suffering so? And my God, as a young person, I couldn't even answer. I couldn't say anything. I didn't understand it. I didn't have the answer. And God, she was going through that and she was questioning, God, where are you in all this? That's the Lord. Say, consider, Lord, my God, and enlighten that word there, lighten or enlighten. It, it is like the it's, it, it's like the rising of the sun, the rising of the sun that comes after a dark night. I'm going somewhere with this, right? It, it's a he it says enlightenment. It, it's like the sun coming up after a long dark night. Where I'm going with this, weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning and all the words you are saying god yes as the sun must come up i just need you to enlighten me yes to shine upon me yes let your glory fill the space because i'm talking to myself and myself telling me back that i go dead i will die myself is not giving me all the good encouragement then i have to reconsider and rethink and say god i will turn to you that you go share some light on this matter that you go share some light on my finances that you go share some light on my power that you will share some light on my job that you go 
Bless the Lord. So turn, turn, and like me. At least my enemies say, let me tell you something, the devil don't like nobody. Just turn to somebody next to you and say, the devil don't like you. The devil don't like you. And the enemy job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Are you hearing me this morning? The enemy job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill your joy. Steal, kill your money. Steal, kill your family. Steal and kill your children. But I love the Bible, you know. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly. I love the word of God. He says, come on to me, all you are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. Can I be honest with you? I told the worshiper, sing like I never sing before. Sing for the next hour. Because I am feel like preaching this morning. But here I am holding the mic. And the Holy Ghost is moving in his house. And I feel like preaching the word of God. Can I get some support here? Amen, amen, amen. He says, uh, the enemy go come. And when they come, they go overcome me. And then they go start talking about me. Hey, hallelujah. Have you ever been in a how long spot? Uh, and then the enemy comes and say, but ain't this a Christian? And you just go to church every Sunday. And then, you know the super spiritual ones. I just put in this one book free. It's two things we need to be delivered from. Sin and some saints. Sin and some saints. Mm -hmm. Because there are some saints who are all holy and all good and all righteous and everything is going good. And they have a direct line with God. And everything God tells them and speaks to them. I thank God for these kind of saints. But they can lead you astray because the same saints will say, check yourself. It seems like something you've done wrong. Check yourself. You've got cancer. Something God punishing you for. Have you ever heard that? Check yourself. Because the reason you lost your job is because something you're doing wrong. Or check yourself. The reason you get that to take. The reason you got sick is because we didn't take care of our body. The reason some of it is hereditary that we inherited because we live in this world. Hallelujah. I have cousins who were born with diabetes. They had no choice in the matter. Hallelujah. We have children who are born with AIDS. They have no choice in the matter. They didn't do anything wrong. But we live in a world where sins abound. But the Bible says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hope I didn't mess you up or tie you up with this one. He says the enemy is coming, he's prowling. And they like to point the finger. The enemy does always use the closest person to you. That don't mean you should watch on the left or the right. Keep your head straight. But just use people close to you. Because you're looking for the people close to you to encourage you. They say, sister, yeah, this is for a time. This is you're, what you're going through here. This too shall pass. But then there are the saints who will come and just discourage you. And all of a sudden you give up before you ever started. Have you ever been there? Hallelujah. I've been through so much and I continue to go through so much that I'm looking at life and sometimes I'm just smiling and them, them children will say, Daddy losing it, Daddy gone mad. Or some of the things I'm saying, they say, Daddy gone, especially I have a daughter whose mouth is getting a little hot. And she likes to give her talks now and tell me, but I, I, as I tell them, live long enough, just keep living. What what the old people say? What a meter, eh? Pastor, keep living. Hallelujah. I'm uh, going down here. I'm going to end. Uh, somebody look at verse 5 and let's call out the first word that comes out at verse 5. 
say it out loud. But, you see in the Bible, when you see the but, there's a changing, there's a shift. The, 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 the psalmist, for those who drive gears, was in earth's gear. And then somehow by verse 2, he went in the second gear. And by verse 3, he started to go into third gear because somehow more you change your gears, it's faster you're moving. And by the fifth gear, by the fifth verse, he comes up with the solution. But, and I always ask the saints, is, have you ever been there and you had the but moment? The B-U-T, that's to make the air clear. The but moments. He says here, yeah, but I've trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Hallelujah. What if what if God tells us that his mercies are new every day, every morning? But it talks about mercy, it talks about a hearing God. A God, no matter what we have been through, what we have done, wherever we have gone, we come and when we come to him and we, 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 we respond to him, his word, and we say, God, have mercy. He will have mercy. My God, that's the love of a God that we serve. You need to read verses 1 to 6 and verses 1 to 6. 6. No way does God says anything. God does not reply. God does not say anything. God, maybe nothing comes from God. But the psalmist, <laughs> he says, Hear this, but I have trusted in thy mercy. And if you read that carefully, he are, he's speaking about the past tense. Gonna get a little crazy here. Speaking about the past tense, he says, I am in a predicament, I'm in a dark place, nothing seems to be working out. It seems like this chapter 13 goes together where he says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I shall fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff, they are with me. He says, Hallelujah. When things are falling all around you, when loved ones are walking out, when children are on drugs and living on the streets, when we look and we see those in power taking advantage of those underneath them, when we look and we see injustice, when we look and we see George Floyd, oh my God, being murdered, when we look and we see black men and women, their lives being taken like animals. When we look right in our country and we say there's a percentage that seems to rule. Let me just, warn, just encourage you this morning that when man think that he is in charge, that he is in control, my God, the psalmist said, when I look, I saw my enemy, and I look and I saw this, and I look to the front, I saw that, I look to the back, I saw this. In other words, when he looked all around, there was turmoil, there was pressure, there was tribulation, but one place he did not look until the ending of the verse, when he looked up, he saw God and he remembered the mercies of God. He remembered that he walked through the valley of the shadow of death and God brought him to the mountain top. Hallelujah. Let me tell you there's something this morning. If you take check of your life and you just study how good God has been good to you. 
how good God has been to you. You would not even wait on the musician to strike a key. You would not wait on the drummer to beat the drum. You would not wait on the singer to sing. You would not wait on the pastor to say, praise God. If you have any consideration or any thought in your mind of how good God has been, you would not wait on anybody else. You will start shouting and praising and glory by God. Hallelujah. You know what? Let me just point out some stuff to you. When you breathe in, you pray, you breathe out. You should be saying thank you. You went to sleep, you got up this morning, you should be thankful. You look around, this morning some of us ate before we come, and when we go, we're going to eat again. We should be thankful. My God, you look around, your children are still with you, your loved ones are still with you, you still have life, you still have hope, you still have faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. The psalmist, in other words, say, God, even when I can't trace you, I will still trust you. Even when I can't track you, I will still, God, I will still trust you. Because I believe that you are a rewarder to those that diligently seek you, God. I believe that those who are living for you, those who are walking in the light, will be rewarded. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. He says, I look and I see the care of my God. I look and I see the compassion of my God. I look and I saw that God is a supplier. God is a way maker. God is a rewarder. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is a keeper. God is God and he will always be God. And he does not have to say much. All he has to do is remain God. And once he remains God, he will stand by his word. And his word declares that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be with us even to the end of the world. That's hope this morning. That's something we can take to the bank and say, I trust in this. I trust in his word. There's a song that says, who are saying, when mother and father forsake me, when others go and they leave me alone, God will be there for me. God, you can bet your last dollar that God will be there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Elijah, after defeating about 400 plus prophets. A woman by the name of Jezebel say, I go kill him. And he started running for his life. And he went to a brook. And he, while he was there in the brook, the water was keeping him. And the raven was bringing bread. And the brook dried up and the raven stopped coming. And the prophet said, God, have you forgotten me? Here you bring me here to die. God, I have a how long, how long, how long, God? But let me tell you this. The story changes dramatically. When God starts moving in your life, the story changes dramatically. When the power of God comes on your life, the story will change in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. The story will change. One day the rapture will take place. One day the saints of God will be taken away. And there shall we see for ourselves the hope of glory, the God of glory, the lover of my soul. One day, and until that day come, keep trusting. Don't let nobody point their finger and say, well, nobody knows what you're going through like you know what you're going through. They may come similar or close to what you are going through, 
but nobody knows exactly how you feel. But let me tell you, sis, let me tell you this. There's a God who cares. There's a God who understands. There's a God who's sticking closer than a brother. Hey, wants some right to put pen to paper. And he says, honey in the rock. Hallelujah, my brother. Honey in the rock, my sister. Oh, there's honey in the rock. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Somebody shout his name, Jesus. Somebody let the neighborhood hear. His name is Hallelujah. So I, I, I think you have enough. But you go, go back and read the Psalms. And keep trusting. We all go through moments in our lives where we feel like giving up. I am pastor of this house. And if I tell you the amount of times I felt like just walking away. I felt like giving up because God seemed so far away and the troubles were so near that I can taste it. But I held on, not because I'm anything all that and a bag of chips. I held on to his word. I held on to his unchangeable hands. I held on to the everlasting arms of God through his word. And I was encouraged by others. And I was prayed for by others. And somebody prayed for me. And somebody encouraged me. And I said, this is the day that I will make it. And then the other day came, and the other day came, and the other day come, and then I felt like giving up. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God. Hallelujah. And if you feel like giving up this morning, join in the towel. If you feel that there's pressure in that job, consider those who don't have a job. If you feel pressure in that family, consider those who don't have a family. If you feel like it's pressure in your neighborhood, consider those who live in a worse off neighborhood. If you feel like giving up, I want you to give up to God. Give it up to God. Say, God, you handle this. God, you take care of this. God, you make a way in this matter. God, there are more bills than anything. God, make a way. God, make a way. And if you're mature enough, you'd realize that you're here in September 2021. A pandemic started in 2020 and you're still here. Oh boy, that was your cue to give God some praise. You're still here in 2021. Christmas is just about 90 something days away. And we're going to face a Christmas together. We're still here giving God praise. We're still here rejoicing. I say I'm going to end, I'm going to end, I'm going to end. But I believe when the psalmist started to say, I go think about the goodness of God and I go rejoice and he started dancing and he started singing that this is the day that the Lord has made and then he started rejoicing that the enemy was confused because the enemy was expecting him to be down and out. The enemy was expecting him to die but God stepped in and he started to worship and he started to praise. And he started to rejoice. And the enemy say, I can't understand that, you know. I can't understand it. I, I, I bring this on you. You should be dead. You should be dead. How come you're living? And then you smile. And you tell the enemy. Oh, oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus singing oh the blood 
of Jesus, my God. Come on. For those of you who are looking online today, God kept you. Keep singing. God, keep trusting. And as we end today on our live stream, I pray that God continue to bless you and watch over you while you keep trusting him in Jesus' name. God bless you. Come on, worshipers.